Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about equipotential lines and what they tell you about the electric potential, the electric field, and the potential energy. So uh, first, let's start with my favorite example, which is the parallel plate capacitor. So here are the plates here, positive plate and negative plate. The electric field goes from the positive to the negative, down just like that. And so remember that these are two parallel plates uh, arranged like this. So there's a sheet down here and a sheet up here. And uh, the uh, surface down here will be an equipotential surface. That is a surface of constant electric potential. This one I'm going to call zero volts. And the top one I'm going to set to a potential of eight volts. So, so the natural question is, if I wanted to think about an equipotential line, that is a line of constant electric potential, that will be perpendicular to the electric field at every point here. Now, if this line is midway between here, what is the electric potential of that line? Well, since it's midway between, it's going to be midway between in terms of electric potential as well. That's going to be the 4-volt line. So then midway between the 4 and the 8 is going to be the 6-volt line. And midway between the 0 and the 4 is going to be the 2-volt line. Now what would happen if I took a positive charge and put it in here? Uh, what would it do? Well, it's going to feel a force in the direction of the electric field, which is down. So it's going to accelerate down. But in terms of electric potential, it's going to, this is high potential here, this is low potential here. It's going to accelerate from high potential to low potential. That is what positive charges do. Negative charges, uh, let's see, what would happen if I put a negative charge here? What do they do? Well, the electric field is down, but they feel a force in the opposite direction of that, so they're going to feel a force up. It's going to accelerate up. Uh, but in terms of potential, it's going to accelerate from low potential to high potential. Okay. Now, uh, what about the energy difference if I go from this 6-volt line to this 4-volt line? What energy difference am I going to get there compared to, how does that energy difference compare to going from the 4-volt to the 2-volt line? Well, it's going to be the same because the voltage difference from 6 to 4 is 2. Voltage difference from 4 to 2 is 2, so it doesn't matter. And in fact, if I added 10 to all these voltages, so I set this bottom one at a potential of 10 volts and this top one at a potential of 18 volts, it would be the same story. 16 minus 14 is still 2. My point here is that the absolute zero point is not important. What is important are the voltage differences. Those are the only things that is important here. Speaking of voltage differences, that is what the electric field tells you about. So electric field has units of volts per meter. And uh, in, in fact, in detail, the electric field is going to be the change in voltage over the change in position. Um, so if I knew the spacing of these lines was 1 centimeter, which is 0 0.1 meters, then I could figure out the electric field. The electric field would be uh, the voltage difference divided by the change in position. And so uh, that would be 2 volts divided by 0 0.01 meters, or 1 centimeter. And so that becomes 200 volts per meter. So the electric field strength is determined by the spacing of these lines. If the spacing of these lines, that is the delta x, is very small, these lines are close together, the electric field is going to be big. And if they're spread far apart, then we're going to be dividing by a big number, and the electric field is going to be small, right? Just like lines on a contour map, where the lines are spaced together, um, that is a steep elevation change. And where they're spread far apart, it's a very gradual elevation change. It's the same idea here. Okay, now how, do, uh, how does this work? This is nice for parallel plates where everything is uh, parallel and straight. What about a regular charge? So let's imagine a charge of Q. Um, what do the equal potential lines look like for that? Well, the electric field lines are straight out like this. Let me just draw those as vectors. Uh, what do the equal potential lines look like? Well, they have to be perpendicular. So I need a perpendicular here, perpendicular here, perpendicular here, perpendicular here. If I join all these together, that's going to be a circle like that. The other thing is that the electric field decreases as I go farther from the charge because the density of field lines gets smaller as I go farther 
from the um, charge. And so the equipotential lines, if I draw, let's say this is the uh, 100 volt line, the 90 volt line might be, let's say, here. Um, and then the 80 volt line has to be uh, spaced a little farther out. Now, how do I know that? Well, again, the electric field is telling you the difference in potential divided by the difference in distance, or the spacing. The spacing here is got to be smaller than the spacing here, because here, closer to the 80 or 100 volt line, the electric field itself is bigger. And as I go out, these lines are spaced farther and farther apart. Okay. Now, one more point is that equipotential lines do not have a direction. Um, they are just a surface of constant potential energy, so there's no direction associated with them. Um, the electric field vectors, on the other hand, those electric field lines do have a direction, and they point from positive charges into negative charges. Similarly, you can infer the direction of the electric field vectors by pointing them from high potential to low potential, because that's the direction that uh, positive charges will feel a force, high potential to low potential.